Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how to use Scalar 2 inside Rumble. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are inside Rumble as a standalone version. Let's go on the hamburger menu, select new and select eight tracks. Okay, let's remove this MIDI to CV. So the first way to use Scalar is to click uh, on the plus sign and add it in as a generator or your unit instrument. Let's click on the plus sign. Let's find it, like so, and select Scalar 2. Now let's uh, pop it out as a window, like so. Now let's select uh, a genre for a song. Uh, why don't we go for uh, cinematics and uh, epic? Let's choose these chords. Put it in a loop. I already have it by default set to um, on for those things, so I don't have to do that um, anymore. And now you can click play. Now, you can, of course, use the features inside Scalar 2, like, for example, going up an octave. And I have created a series of tutorials that you can refer to. Like so. Okay, so that's uh, one way you can continue like that. For example, you can go uh, on the second track, bring in another audio uni instrument, search again for uh, um, Scalar 2, there it is. And what you can also do now, let me show you that uh, it recognizes other instances. So let's go back to track one, open Scalar 2, let's go to the menu and click on sync. And you wait a second and you will find the other instance and now we can synchronize the progression builder now section c so let's press on the sync button and now if we go to track number two you see that the chord progression is already there available on section c and the looping is already on now in here what we are going to do is to um click on perform um perhaps uh, we're going to uh, go for uh, a base of type trans, trans one, which is fine. And then we're going to use, for example, a bass guitar and let's click um, play. And of course, you can uh, uh, continue uh, like that and um, you can build uh, um, your own track as you need. So, for example, uh, you can go to track number three and let's add, for example, a and kick and let's uh, build something like this for a kick drum. And so on and so forth. That's one way that you can do that. So let's create a new project now. Let's start again. So the other way is to add, for example, a audio unit MIDI processor. So again, let's search for Scalar 2, which will be Scalar Control 2 this time. Okay, let's open it up like so. Let's choose a different genre in terms of song. Um, let's go, for example, for disco. Why not? Disco 1. Select this chord again and drag them and drop them in section C, the progression builder, activate the looping. And uh, now if you press play, you don't hear anything because you don't have any instrument in trouble. So let's first of all increase the number of voices other because we are rendering chords. And let's click on the plus sign. Let's go on the generator instrument and select, for example, this April plug and uh, adjust the setting on velocity. And let's click play. Really 
nice. Let's add it a little bit of rhythm. We click on perform and let's choose something uh, like uh, rhythms, uh, volante, and uh, martiali. And let's press play again. Nice indeed. Now you can continue like so. Let's go to track number two and let's add another audio unit MIDI processor. And again, let's find the scalar control two, like so. Adjust the window size. Then let's go back to the previous instance of scalar control um, two and let's sync uh, the two of them. So there you are. Progression sync. Okay, done. Let's go back to track number two and let's open scalar two. We have already our progression there on section C and um, then let's click on perform. And this time again, let's go for a, a base, like a common base, basic one pattern. And here we are going to uh, add another instrument from Drumbo and why not? Let's go for that jump bass and now let's play and adjust perhaps the transposition up and down. Okay, it's a little bit too low. So let's move these uh, here and um, let's go to MIDI. Let's go right to the bottom. Let's click transpose uh, interval to 12 and go up by one and let's click. Perfect. Let's continue like so. So, for example, let's add again a and kick like so. Perfect. Now, let me show you something even more interested in a moment. But let's add some snares in very quickly. Stereo on snare, stereo snares like so. Let's increase the number of bars like so. Oops, so let's go to the first bar. We do something like that on the second, something like that as well. So we put steps for our snare like so. Let's click play. See, I have added um, hi hats, and let's adjust also uh, velocity for the hi hat. Perfect. Now let's go to track number six, and let's add something a little bit more interesting to create something like a melody. So again, we search for a scalar control uh, two, like so. Okay, perfect. We synchronize again all. Uh, uh, instances of scalar control two. So as you can see, found other two. So let's synchronize. Oops, not the sync, the uh, progression builder. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's go back to track number six. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to add a generator as an audio uni instrument, and we're going to bring in Monolith. Why now? We're going to choose the browser or preset lead. Let's scroll back up. Let's go to something like the chip lead, like so. Let's click play. And now, if you followed the other tutorials on Scalar 2, you will see what I'm doing in the sequencer as I play.
as you can see, I have added um, um, different groups, selected melody as mode, have a melody style only to set the melody. Then I changed the different patterns to bring some variability. And then I changed also the resolution for group two and four to give, again, that a little bit more flavor to the melody. And of course, so you are inside Drumbo. Now you can go, for example, and say, let's add, uh, why not, a chorus there. And maybe let's add uh, um, another uh, a audio unit processor. Why not? Which um, um, is nice. Let's choose, for example, phaser on this one. And let's choose uh, uh, a preset like uh, metal box. So you can do a lot inside Rumble, of course. <laughs> This has been done using um, Scalar 2 um, as, a, if you like, MIDI processor. And I have used only on track 3, 4, and 5 for the drums. I have used the different clips inside Drumbo. But let's say that you want to use uh, uh, Drumbo also for the code in terms of driving that patterns directly inside Drumbo. So how do you do that? Well, let's remove this uh, uh, instrument uh, temporarily. So one way um, is to add a, gener uh, well, actually, let's go under MIDI, add uh, another MIDI processor. And inside here, choose again Drumbo, like so. And then inside here for Drumbo, um, let's increase the measure to four. And let's put it in record mode. And now let's uh, click play. <music> Let's stop. Now, um, you see the clip has been generated there, so you can click and hold and drag and drop, and you have it up there. So let's click these, remove this Drumbo instance, and now let's bring up the, um, the uh, editor, and, um, and there you have uh, your pattern, which has been uh, recorded, of course, and you have all your chords there. And that's uh, one way that you can actually uh, do it. It's not always uh, reliable. I find that sometimes it misses notes when you record uh, um, Drumbo inside Drumbo. So you, if that happens or if you have notes which don't uh, belong to what you played, like in this case, it shows a pattern here which uh, uh, should have not been created, just uh, the later the instance of uh, Drumbo inside Drumbo and repeat the process again. Or sometimes what you might have to do is also do it in a different track, okay? Uh, the other thing, of course, that um, um, you can do is uh, if you're using, for example, um, uh, for example, um, Drumbo inside a UM and you have a complex setup, you can al always save, for example, the project here uh, so you can say, um, save the project here, um, save as, and then um, just give it a name, for example, um, test SFM, like so, click save, and then return to Drumbo, and you can still um, open up Drumbo, um, like so, and um, there you are. And then you can load the project inside that instance of Drumbo, like so. Right? And there you are. And then you have your pattern there. Oh, cool. Okay. And then uh, as you have your pattern there, you can click and drag and drop, of course, in the other instance. So you can quickly uh, leave this one open, uh, operate in AUM, save the project in AUM in that instance of Drumbo, and then load uh, the, uh, that uh, project again uh, from the Drumbo instance inside Drumbo in the standard unload mode and then click and drag um, the pattern which you created in the project which comes from AOM. Hopefully it makes um, sense. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I hope you found this useful and as always, see you next time. Bye.